Hello and welcome to part three of my camper van buying guide and what's arguably the most important decision of all, the base van, the foundations of the build for your camper van. Whether you're buying a base vehicle and doing it up yourself or buying a vehicle that's already been converted, the base van is extremely important. I will talk about the engines, the models, the drivetrain, the wheelbase and the factory options that are available to you to make sure you make the right decision. Now beginning with the model year, and this is gonna be largely driven by the budget which you have available. Now the Transporter T4 was built between 1990 and 2003. Now this is a vehicle, if you did fancy an older vehicle or your budget didn't actually allow anything more expensive, the T4 is still a great vehicle to be building your camper van from. If you've got a little bit more money or you just want something a little bit more modern, the Transporter T5 was manufactured between 2003 and 2015, and it actually had a facelift in 2010, which turned it into the T5.1. And this, on meets, is still a really, really popular vehicle. But if you're looking for something a little bit more modern still, in 2015 came the T6, the latest iteration of the Transporter, albeit now it being the T6.1 after it's had its facelift a couple of years ago. And this is really the vehicle which most of the modern conversions are actually done on. Until, that is, the new T7 comes out, which hopefully isn't gonna to be too far away from being announced. Now, if I was to discuss all the models, all the different iterations, all the different engines that have happened for all these vehicles, it would actually be a ridiculously long video. So I'm just gonna give you a brief overview, but let's get inside, because it's starting to rain. Now the first thing which we need to be looking at as far as the base van's concerned is what type of vehicle is it? Now what I mean by this is, is it a panel van? Now a panel van is a very good starting point for a camper van and this comes as standard with two seats and then a whole load of space behind. So you're starting with a complete blank canvas. Now you've also got a combi which you will have heard of. Now a combi vehicle is a little bit more of a passenger vehicle and it's different in the fact that it's got rear windows in the sides at the back, and it's also got a rear set of seats. So these vehicles can actually come in five or six seats. And this is probably the best starting point for a day van. Another vehicle which you could use as a day van is a Caravel. Now a Caravel is, effectively it looks like a transporter, but it's a lot more plush. It's got some better creature comforts inside. Often they've come with electric seats, electric doors. They've even got a table so you can be having your drinks and things in the back and there is glass all round, whereas still on the combi, even though it's got the side windows, the panels towards the back, they're still actually metal, there's no glass there, but the Caravelle has got glass all the way around. Now after this, you've got another van, which you don't need to kit out because it's already kitted out, and that's the Volkswagen California. Now the California comes in a few different ranges, which we'll go into in more detail later on and this is actually already registered as a motor caravan on the log box so the higher speed limits apply because they have passed those extra safety tests which are required for this now we could go off on lots of different tangents here but we don't really want to be doing that so we're going to ignore those last few vehicles and just concentrate on actually conversion of the panel van itself and for your panel van you are going to need to choose an engine now again let's not make this video three hours long and i'm going to start from the T5.1, which came out in 2010. There are loads of engines prior to this, 1.9, 2.5. There was even some really tasty petrol engines in some of the vehicles, but for the purpose of this video, we'll just put those to one side. Over the years, Volkswagen have kind of had kind of banded engines, which you could potentially determine as small, medium, and large. So over the years, we've had the smaller engines, which have been the 84, 102 horsepower, and then more recently, we've now got the 110 horsepower models, and these engines have been mated to a five-speed manual gearbox, and that was the only option for the smaller engine. The most recent 110 horsepower engine is a Euro 6, so this is much better for the clean air zones, which are popping up seemingly everywhere at the moment. In what I'd call the medium category in recent years, since the T5.1, we've had the 140 brake horsepower model, which is a Euro 5 engine, and then more recently, we've now got the, the 150 brake horsepower model, which is now a Euro 6 engine and has the Add Blue system in it to make those emissions a lot cleaner. And this medium-sized engine can be mated to either a 
six speed manual gearbox or a seven speed DSG automatic gearbox. And these vehicles can actually be powered by different drivetrains. So you can actually have two wheel drive, which powers the front wheels, or you can have the four wheel drive system, which Volkswagen call the four motion system. So there's just another option just to throw into the portfolio. And then we've got what I would call the larger engines. Now this contains the 180 horsepower model. We've also got the 204 and the 199. And these are the most powerful engines which you can actually get in a Volkswagen Transporter. Now, if you are looking at the older vehicle and you are looking at this 180 horsepower bi-turbo engine, please do your research on it. You will hear the horror stories about this particular engine. Make sure you do do your research on that. And also over the years, there have actually been some petrol engines with a more modern two litre TSI, which actually came out on a very, very short run of vehicles. You will rarely actually see these coming out in a camper van. There's not many of them around. And the ones you do find are generally lower spec, which I'll come on to in a moment, and also barn doors, which you might not be preferring. But again, we can talk about that again in the future. So your choice of engine will be dependent on several different factors. Now, the lower powered engines are meant to be a lot more economical on paper. Ask other people who've got a similar van to what you're looking at find out what returns they get on their miles per gallon, if that is something which is important to you. Another question to ask yourself, are you gonna to be towing? Are you gonna be putting anything on the back so you do need that bit more power? If you are, then actually that low powered engine, is it really gonna be enough? Or are you gonna be putting it under too much pressure? I personally wouldn't fancy towing with one of the smaller powered engines. I would much prefer to opt for something a little bit larger. I do find that the middle power engine, the 140, 150, is actually a really good engine. And to be quite honest with you, that's really my choice. It's in the middle ground and it is extremely economical. I get 38 miles per gallon out of mine. So economy wise, you know, you can't complain at that. It pulls really well and I've never had any problems with it, but it's entirely up to you. Maybe you want the bigger power engine the large engine, now some people say this is fast, this is quick. Is it, is it a van? Yeah, it's 200 horsepower, but it's a van. But that's up to you, get out and drive it, test it out and see if it is the one for you. Now, as far as the gearbox is concerned, whether you want for the manual or the automatic, the DSG, I do think that this is personal preference. Some people prefer the laziness of an automatic, just put it in drive, off you go, you don't have to worry about it and some people do like to change gear. Can't really say that one's better than the other, but the DSG gearbox is more sought after. It is a higher spec level. So trim levels, or spec as sometimes it's referred. Prior to the T6.1, there was actually four trim levels. However, now with a 6.1, they've actually reduced this down just to two. So the previous day was the start line, then you had the trend line, then you had the high line and then you had the very very limited edition sport line which there weren't actually that many made now the contents of the trims did actually change over the years so it'd be again it'd be very long-winded for me actually go into each individual one so the basic model was the start line uh, then going up to the trend line and the high line the high line was really the high spec vehicle which was actually mass produced rather than just the sport line which was, as I say, only produced in very small numbers. Although you will see a lot of vehicles with the Sportline kit on it, especially the T6s, you'll see the Sportline front bumper, you'll see the Sportline wheels, and if you have a look at my van, that's exactly what I've got on my van. But it isn't a genuine Sportline van. It is a Highline with those bits added on. For the T6.1, Volkswagen dropped the trend line, therefore just leaving the start line and the high line with very, very limited numbers of the sport line again, which really did command a premium. The start line being the basic vehicle, and this is much more of a commercial look from the exterior because the bumpers aren't actually painted in the same as the body color. As a minimum, if you are really looking at the start line model, you want to be looking for the start line with the business pack. Now the business pack does come with some good additions, which really are something which you, you should have. And I do know a lot of the converters will often include the business pack with the start lines, um, but if they don't, then 
really you probably shouldn't really be bothering with it and this includes the anti-theft alarm central locking electronically controlled air conditioning glove compartment and rear parking sensors and if you don't want the commercial look you could also opt for the exterior pack now the exterior pack for the start line does paint those non-painted bumpers and also the mirrors as well the casings of the mirrors obviously not the mirror you wouldn't be able to see it so that does give it the the better more premium look even though it is just a start line with business and exterior packs the highline model is the higher spec one which actually includes all the above already as standard however as i have referred in a previous video the t6.1 panel van and combi and shuttle cannot actually now be specced from factory the factory orders are closed for these vehicles with only the california which is currently still in production and they've just brought out the california surf which you might have seen in my last video as far as the panel vans are concerned which really is the vehicle which a lot of people do convert into the camper vans only stock vehicles really are going to be available maybe that's cancelled orders from the dealers which you might be able to pick up now i do know that the vw approved dealers are still getting the orders in they are still actually coming through so they will be able to produce these higher quality vans i do know a lot of the other conversion companies who aren't vw approved i've heard that some of them are actually having their orders cancelled so you might need to be quick if you are looking for a brand new t6.1 you might actually have to be very quick because i don't think there's actually going to be an awful lot of t6.1 panel vans coming to the market now bear in mind when you are looking at these vehicles you might think that one is a lot more expensive than the other one but you do have to bear in mind that there's a huge price difference between the base vehicles so if you're looking at a five-speed manual start line model the price of that is going to be considerably cheaper than the seven-speed dsg automatic highline variant there is a big price difference between these two models so do watch out when you are looking that you are actually comparing exactly like for like there is another big factor when you're actually looking at your base van and this is the carrying capacity the numbers we often see the t26 t28 t30 t32 what do these mean well it is the carrying capacity and i did talk about this in my is your van a legal video so you can have a look at that here and if you haven't caught up with the rest of the buying guide series you can have a look at that here thanks for watching take care i hope to see you soon